In F1, you don't get any trophies or plaudits for coming in 10th place. But at the same time, they say every point counts. So what if we made it so every point really counted and made 10th the most valuable scoring position? And then, what if we made these changes in one of the best seasons in recent memory? Well, this is what the 2021 championship looks like if the points were reversed. Who would win? Would it be as close as the battle at the front was? That's for you to find out. I'm going for 5k by the end of the year, so if you could help me out in any way, that would be much appreciated appreciated. On to this incredible championship. After an amazing title fight in 2020, we start 2021 in Bahrain. Perez would start in the pit lane after his car almost died on the formation lap and on the first lap Nikita Mazepin crashed immediately. After running outside of the points, Alonso retired on lap 32 and Vettel rear-ended Esteban Ocon. Verstappen and Hamilton had an incredible battle for the lowest points position. Not too sure why they wanted it so bad as it finished with Lance Stroll in 10th, Yuki Tsunoda on debut in 9th and Carlos Sainz in 8th. This meant Aston Martin and Ferrari had tied on 25 points, with Alfa Tauri and McLaren also tied on 18. Next, it was Imola, and it was a wet start. At the front, Verstappen and Hamilton continued to be for that one point, but behind, some things happened. Bottas had a bad start and was fighting with Russell for 9th place. While this was happening, Hamilton lost it while lapping cars and dropped to 7th place. While Hamilton reversed out of the barrier down the main straight, Russell lost it on the grass which took out both him and Bottas in a massive crash. This led to a red flag which saved Hamilton and and brought everyone back together again for the rest of the race. Sonoda spun from 8th place, Perez spun out of the points and it ended with Fernando Alonso finishing in 10th with Ocon 9th and Stroll 8th. Originally Raikkonen was in 9th but he was given a 30 second post race penalty which dropped him to 14th. So an Alpine 1-2 at Imola. But with Stroll getting that 8th place he takes a 15 point lead on Fernando in 2nd and then Sainz and Ricardo. Alpine jump Aston Martin in the standings and Ferrari are not far behind. On to Portugal and it was probably the first snoozer of the year but one thing it did do was spice up the standings. Gasly finished 10th which added to his 12 points meant he had 37 and with Ricardo coming 9th it took his points total to 40. Stroll did not score but Alonso did so he would have 3 drivers on 40 points and then another one on 37. Alpine go 12 points clear of McLaren and the constructors as Alfa Tauri and Ferrari trail close behind. I know it's only the third race but it's looking good in our alternate championship. Spain would be the next race and with Verstappen and Hamilton still going hard at it for that one point we were left with another kind of boring race. With only one retirement coming through Sonoda we had 19 finishers once again and with that we got Gasly finishing in 10th once again. This came at the cost of Alonso who at lap 62 of 66 was running in 10th place. That was before he got overtaken by basically everyone and finished 17th. In 9th it was Ocon again as he barged past Fernando and put himself in contention and Norris was 8th. His teammate Ricardo finished 6th which meant he would be getting 10 points which kept him 2nd in the standings. But Gasly was now our leader by 12 points from Ricardo and then Ocon. McLaren closed up to within 5 points of Alpine and Alfa Tauri are only 3 points behind. With Ferrari being better this year, these 3 teams might be the challenges for the constructors. It was a lights to flag victory for Verstappen as he finished ahead of Sainz and Norris in Monaco. Just to give you a reminder of what happened in this race because it wasn't that great, Bottas had the longest pit stop in history, the TV directors cut to a replay when the only on track battle was happening which of course was the Lance Stroll clip and Antonio Giovinazzi finished 10th. I mean come on who remembers that? In terms of our championship this win from a backmarker team does not change much but it's the 9th and 8th places that are important. Ocon got 9th once again and even though he went straight on at the swimming pool chicane Stroll managed to get 15 points. Gasly claimed another 10 points and stays out in front as Ocon and Stroll jumped Ricardo who endured an awful race and got lapped by his teammate in 12th. Alonso once again didn't score and it's a French 1-2 I and mean, kind of 3 if you count Canadian Belgian as Frenchies. Alpine claim another big chunk of points through Ocon to stay in first and Alfa Tauri and McLaren have dropped back a bit with the latter only scoring 4 points all weekend. Baku was a crazy one for both championships. After running in a decent points position on lap 29 the Pirellis got to Lance Stroll and exploded on the main street. And then on lap 45 Verstappen's tyres did the same and caused a red flag. On the restart Hamilton cooked it into turn 1 and we got brilliant battles all across the grid in the final 2 laps. With both Mercedes out of the points Verstappen out and both Hasses shocked being outside the top 10, we got a very weird finish. Perez won from Vettel and then Gasly. A great result in real life, but not so great for his championship when Ricardo finished in 9th. Raikkonen picked up 10th for back to back Alfa Romeo wins, and Sainz was 8th. Gasly did have a nice buffer to second place, but with Ocon retiring so early and Ricardo having an awful Monaco race, Gasly keeps first in the standings. He's now just 8 points in front, but it's a narrow escape for him. Ocon is only 10 points behind, but a great result for Stroll went begging with that tyre blowout. Alpine continued to lead in the constructors, but now from Alfa Tauri and then McLaren as Yuki managed a P7 to secure some good points for the team. After that crazy result,
result, we returned back to earth with a return to Paul Ricard. I'm just kidding, this was an alright race. At the front, Mercedes and Red Bull traded strategies, but in the midfield, all of our championship contenders scored, apart from Ocon. That's what happens when you drive for Alpine. Gasly has been very consistent this season, and he was 7th in this one, but behind, Stroll and Vettel combined for an Aston Martin 1-2, with Stroll claiming 25 points to get back into contention. Alonso was in 8th place, and Ricardo was in 6th, and this is how the standings look after 7 races. Gasly has 88 points in 1st, with Stroll having 80 in 2nd, Ricardo in 3rd with 78, and Ocon and Alonso in 4th and 5th with 66 and 65 points. Alpine are still out in front, with McLaren now 2nd, and Alfa Tauri 3rd. With their 1-2 and 43 points, Aston Martin now look to be challengers if they can continue to finish races and are now only 10 behind Alfa Tauri. It was a double header next in Austria, but although Max won by 36 seconds in this one, there was major drama on lap 1 for our championship. Leclerc clipped Gasly's rear left tyre after the first corner which led to a puncture for Pierre who then hit Giovinazzi and a Williams before retiring. Insane scenes for such a consistent driver in our version of points. The other Alfa Tauri driver would end up taking 25 points though as Yuki was 10th, Alonso was 9th and Stroll was 8th. This means Lance retakes the lead of the championship by 7 points and now Alonso is on the back of Gasly. Ocon's points have dried up and he's now 12 points behind Ricardo in 4th who also didn't score once again. Norris has been consistent this year but his issue has been that he's normally finished quite high. If he starts to finish a little lower he could definitely be in with a shot at a title fight. The constructor stays the same with Alpine in 1st but Alfa Tauri are only 3 points behind. Last time it was the Styrian Grand Prix but now it's the Austrian Grand Prix. If his title challenge hadn't already gone down the sh- Now it definitely has as Ocon got caught up in an unlucky lap 1 incident which retired him then and there. Other than that, and Perez getting touchy with Leclerc, not much happened, and it ended with Fernando getting 25 points, Gasly getting back on form with 18 points, and Leclerc coming 8. Stroll did not score and finish in 13th place, which means the championship lead has changed again. But this time it's Fernando Alonso, as he leads Gasly by 2 points, with Stroll a further 11 back, and Ricardo another 5 back. Alpine continue to lead the constructors, reaffirming the belief that they are just the mid-team to beat, and Alfa Tauri are 13 points back, with McLaren starting to trail off. Now it's the British Grand Prix, the one everyone wants to win one of the best tracks on the planet but first we've got to do a sprint this doesn't really change anything and i mean that only because first second and third are the only points positions and so in the real race it finished with sonoda in 10th three seconds in front of his teammate gasly in 11th no team orders at alpha tauri ocon came back into the points in p9 and stroll was eighth alonso was seventh and so with that he is now 10 points ahead of stroll with gasly now being 14 behind fernando alpine is still out in front as they most of the time have two cars finishing in the points to Alfa Tauri normally only having one. The final race before the summer break was of course the legendary Hungarian Grand Prix. An intermediate start led to Bottas going bowling at turn one with Stroll doing the same. This took out four drivers on the spot and a further two because of the ensuing pit stops. Mazepin would have been in 14th if he didn't retire in the pit lane by the way. After literally everyone pitted apart from Hamilton we had Lewis starting on the grid by himself which still lives rent free in my head as the best moment of 2021. Anyways he dropped to the back of the grid after making the wrong call and now Esteban Ocon leads from Vettel and Nicolas Latifi. In terms of our championship, this race really spiced it up. Stroll took himself out at turn 1 to wipe out third in the championship and Gazi got caught up in Bottas bowling but somehow survived. Later on in the race, everyone had calmed down. Verstappen was now at the points, Hamilton had recovered after his strategy mess up and Fernando Alonso was defending the win for Ocon in 4th place against Lewis. The Williams ran in the points, Gasly was in the top 6 because of course he was and we had a very weird top 10. But in the end, Ocon won the actual race which really hurt Alpine. Vettel was second and then got disqualified and so the big winners were 11th place Raikkonen for Alfa Romeo which claimed the 25 points despite originally being 20 seconds off for Stappen in 10th. Williams claimed big points, Alfa Tauri got a decent result and crucial for the championship Gasly outscored Alonso while also getting the fastest lap which brought the gap down to 11 points. Alpine were now only 6 points ahead of Alfa Tauri going into the summer break. And next was Belgium. Okay I completely forgot about this fast of a race. I can remember qualifying being a banger and it turned out in the end to be decided on Saturday. So let's go over that instead. It was wet all weekend and this bit Lando in the arse in Q3 when he risked it at Eau Rouge and subsequently crashed. The red flag meant there would be only one run in qualifying. Russell and the Williams went purple in the first sector and then purple again in sector 2. We were going to get a Williams on pole and indeed he went on provisional pole as he beat Hamilton by 
13 milliseconds, but then Max spoiled the party by beating him by 3 tenths. The grid for Sunday looked like this. Verstappen, Russell, Hamilton, Ricardo Vettel, Gasly, Ocon, Leclerc, Latifi and Sainz. This is because Bottas got a 5 place grid penalty for Hungary, Norris got a 5 place penalty for changing his gearbox, and on the way to the wet grid, Perez binned it which dropped him out of the top 10. It was then too wet to race and so they did two bullshit laps behind the safety car which counted as racing laps and they dished out half points. This meant Sainz claimed 12.5 points despite initially qualifying 13th. Latifi got 9 points as he scored in 2 consecutive races and Gasly scored 5 points as Alonso was out of the points, which closed the gap down to 6. Ocon had done his job for the team as he made sure Alpine stayed as constructors leaders as we headed into the Dutch Grand Prix at Zandvoort. There was less drama in the Netherlands as apart from Bottas disobeying team orders, not much happened. Patriots, James, please abort the fastest lap attempt for the end of the lap. Oh, bruh! Norris claimed maximum points as Ocon followed him up with 18 and slightly entered the title fight. Alonso outscored Gasly at the front 10 to 6, which extended the gap between them to 10. Stroll continues to stay in third despite not scoring points since Britain, and Alpine go nearly 30 points ahead of AlphaTauri as we head to their home race, Monza. But we had our second sprint race first. This ended with only Bottas, Verstappen, and Ricardo scoring points thanks to this terrible sprint format. In the actual race, Ricardo led most of it, and this was helped when Lewis and Max took each other out at turn one courtesy of two slow stops and the perfect storm. I still can't believe they were together. As Ricardo won the race in a McLaren 1-2, sh** was getting spicy in our championship. First off, Sonoda didn't even start the race due to brake issues and then Gasly retired on lap three after starting from the pit lane. This meant Ocon finished in 10th to cement himself in the title fight with Alonso getting eighth and 15 points. Unless Gasly could start scoring some consistent points again, we were gonna get an inter-team battle between two drivers who do not like each other. In 7th, Stroll finally scored points again and in the constructors, Alpine have gone astronomically clear of AlphaTauri. We had another shaken up grid in Russia as Bottas, Leclerc and Verstappen started from the back of the grid due to changing components. This meant the top 3 was Norris, Sainz and Russell. Near the end of the race, our pretty nailed on win went begging as the rain began to fall. Norris tried to be brave and stayed out, but it ended up with Norris losing the win, Max somehow got 2nd and Hamilton reached 100 wins. But in our championship, Ocon finished way out of the points as Fernando got 6 6th place, only 10 points. Russell got all of the points as Raikkonen got 15. Alonso was now 28 points clear of 2nd place Ocon, and Alpine was 79 ahead of AlphaTauri in 2nd, who were slowly being swallowed up by Ferrari and McLaren. We would get a sequel at Turkey as Red Bull sported a beautiful livery to honour the cancelled Japanese Grand Prix. You couldn't write this, but Gasly and Alonso touched at turn 1 which earned Pierre a 5 second penalty. But apart from this, Bottas had a lights to flag victory and our championship had a big turn. Alonso drowned out of the points and by the skin of his teeth, Ocon somehow made a zero stop strategy work and claimed max points in 10th. Everyone in the title fight scored apart from Alonso and with this, new names enter the picture. Ocon was now only 3 points behind and Stroll claimed 18 points to get 21 behind. Gasly had 136 points and Sainz was even in contention 3 points further back. This was a big race for the championship for sure. The first American race at Austin was next and with that we got more shocks. Lap 1 saw Hamilton and Verstappen go toe to toe again but in our championship Ocon had to change his front wing which dropped him to the back on lap 1. Gasly retired on lap 14 from a suspension issue which left the door open to Alonso to extend his advantage. He retired with 7 laps to go though which meant the top 4 in the championship didn't score a single point as Stroll finished 12th. This opened the door for Sainz who scored again and finished 6th as he entered the top 3. As for who got the points this race? Vettel drove a great race from 18th on the grid to 10th with Sonoda getting 18 points for AlphaTauri. Norris getting 15 points mean McLaren moved ahead of AlphaTauri but was still 67 points off Alpine. We wouldn't be heading far for the next race which was in Mexico. Bottas got pole but did what he did best and bottled it, getting hit by Ricardo at turn 1. At the back, Sonoda retired thanks to the Bottas incident. Ocon got sandwiched in this as well which sent two cars flying and somehow he didn't retire. In our championship, Ocon and Stroll both didn't score but Sainz, Alonso and Gasly all did. Gasly was hurt by his own success as his incredible 4th place only got him 6 points and pretty much left him out of contention as he was 37 points off. This was not helped by Alonso scoring 18 points and Sainz getting 10 to stay 3rd in the championship.
Championship. Norris also claimed a nice 25 points, but it's probably too little too late for him. Alpine were now only 50 points ahead of McLaren in second, as Alfa Tauri have fallen down to fourth in the standings. The final race in the Americas was Brazil, and what a banger it was. First up, the sprint points went to Science, Verstappen and Bottas, as Hamilton went from 20th to 4th. While Verstappen and Hamilton committed war crimes with each other, and that Mercedes engine found a ninth gear in the race, it was very interesting in our championship. Norris hit Science at turn 1 and dropped to the back with a puncture. He would eventually recover to 10th place, but ahead of them, Ocon and Gasly nearly took each other out as it ended with Alonso extending his lead on Ocon to go 23 points clear. Ocon did get 15 points with Gasly getting 12 and Science getting 10, but out of nowhere, Norris has suddenly come into contention. His first lap puncture was a blessing in disguise as it made sure he secured the highest amount of points and he was now 34 off of Alonso. With three races to go, we had a four-way fight for the title. The Constructors was more clear-cut though because Alpine were 58 points ahead and look unlikely to let that lead slip. On to the golf leg of the championship. Gasly and Alonso started second and third in Qatar thanks to penalties for Verstappen and Bottas. In the middle of the race, Bottas got a puncture and dropped back. A dodgy Red Bull strategy for Perez meant that Alonso kept his P3 and amid a few punctures, our championship looks like this. Vettel claimed 25 points for no effect, but Fernando only getting 4 points meant that the 9th place from Norris brought him ever closer to that title fight. Science claimed a good 12 points to stay consistent, and Ocon got 8 to outscore Fernando. 20 points now separated 1st and 3rd, and 23.5 points was the difference between 1st and 4th. This was going to go down to the wire. All was normal in Jeddah's first race until the barrier magnet Mick Schumacher slammed into the wall on lap 10. This sent the whole race into turmoil. On the red flag restart, Verstappen began his terrorist arc and at the back a slightly small incident happened and caused another red flag which wiped out three cars. Ocon then had pole because of what happened at turn one of the restart before Max sent it down the inside in one of his only clean moves of the night. Another Max send led to the infamous brake check and on the last lap Bottas overtook Ocon on the line for P3 which was actually good for Esteban as Alonso was far out of the points. But what he didn't know was Norris was once again in P10 which got him into the lead of the championship by five points. Sainz did score another 15 points which kept him in the hunt but going into Abu Dhabi we had a very close championship. For Alonso to win he would need to outscore Norris by 6 points, for Sainz to win he would need to outscore Norris by 14 points and for Ocon to win he would need to outscore Norris by 19 points. This was going to be a good one in Abu Dhabi and we're not talking about Verstappen and Hamilton. In qualifying our title contenders lined up like this. Norris in 3rd, Sainz in 5th, Ocon in 9th and Alonso in 11th. Hamilton beat Max off the line with the worst tyres before one of the final big sends of the season happened at the end of the straight and it was clean. When all had settled down, Sainz had jumped Norris, Ocon was in 9th and Alonso was still 11th. And by the time Latifi crashed on lap 53, Norris had dropped to 8th, Alonso was 9th and Ocon was 10th. Sainz was still high up and so was basically out of the fight. But with the ensuing safety car, Norris, Ocon and Alonso were all let by with one lap to go and free to race each other for the championship. As it stood, Lando would win the championship by 2 points. Fernando needed 3 more to win and with his teammate in ninth, they just needed to swap positions. But because this is not how the points work in reality, it finished with Norris in 7th and Alonso in 8th, meaning Lando out of absolutely nowhere stole the championship that Alonso looks set to win out of his hands. A truly insane way to end the season and we'll just ignore what happened ahead. In the constructors, Alpine were clear of McLaren but Ferrari were not far off in 3rd. Alfa Tauri fell off hard, Aston Martin were nearly there by the end of the season, Red Bull were sick. Mercedes just beat out Alfa Romeo and Williams were 80 points ahead of that depressing Haas team. So a look at the stats. In our system, 10th is basically a win, and with this we find that Norris got the most wins with 4, followed by 7 drivers with 2. Another 4 drivers scored 1 win and Championship Contender Science was among them. As for the teams, 4 teams scored 4 wins, Alfa Romeo managed 3, and Ferrari got 2 with Williams getting 1. Hamilton and Verstappen dominated the fastest lap standings with 6 each, but 5 drivers, including Mazepin at Spa, we all saw it, got 1 fastest lap all season with Bottas getting the last 4. So our driver standings look like this. Norris won by 2 points to Alonso with Ocon a further 10 points back and Sainz 6.5 points behind him. Gasly completed the top 5 and was quite a way off by season's end despite being in the hunt for a lot of the year. And going down to the bottom of the grid, Latifi scored the least points with just 21 and the Haas duo plus Kubica didn't score any points. And this is what our standings look like compared to the real life standings. If you want to see more seasons like this, trust me they're really good, then let me know below because this was a blast to make. Make sure to check out what happened when I simulated 10 seasons in F1 manager and thank you very much for watching.